That's me, with my family and my grandparents, spending a day in the park, sometime in the first week of April, 1970. Almost a week later, my grandfather, the architect Richard Neutra, would be arguing with a client and drop dead from a massive heart attack. I only have a few recollections of my grandfather. I wanted to understand this man. So in the first months of the year 2000, I went out to LA where he used to live and interviewed on camera some of the people who did know him. By listening to their memories, I was hoping to get a better understanding of who he was and maybe learn something about myself. Mr. Neutra, uh, we would like to have you design a house for us. What's your budget? Well, I hadn't thought about a budget. He's a very imposing man to look at. If I didn't know him, I would be frightened. I'm easily intimidated by that. Just natural, simple, direct, just n nothing in between. I mean, he was an extraordinary being. Your grandfather would come totally unannounced. Why? Because he owned the house. After all, it was his house. He allowed us to live in it and to pay for it. It was very kind of him. But he would, he would appear on the scene. One time, they dropped by about 10 o'clock at night, and he wasn't shaved, which is unusual. And Mrs. Narches said he had felt depressed. And they came and sat here for about 10 minutes. And he didn't say anything. Maybe just to see the view, I don't know. And she wanted a, a mirror where she could stand and, and look at the length of her hand. And he says, absolutely not. You will put a hole in that wall if you do that. And he says, I will not allow you to put a hole in my wall. A lot of my feeling toward him was one of kind of worrying about him. Everyone in the family was always sort of going around trying to support him. You know, it's not good parenting. And so in that sense, it's abusive. It's, it was absolutely not intentional. It was not something he was doing out of bad will or anything, not at all. He was a very needy person. He needed, he just couldn't have enough people interested in what he was doing. Oh yeah, well he certainly had the ability to charm, there's no doubt about it. He was a great, just a natural salesman. Just a watching a master at, at work. <laughs> and he had this animated and, and engaging uh, way of, of talking to people. He looked very impressive with his white hair flowing and so forth getting ready to give a lecture or do something, make a public experience and he, appearance, and he would say, I can't do this, I just, I just know I can't do it, and, and he would be very scared, you know, very down. My father said, well, all right, so are you going to straighten up or are we going to send you to this school? I said, well, I want to go to this school, and then he broke into tears. He had a mission and he wanted to accomplish certain things, and at the same time, he, he was plagued by these self-doubts. Nautra and I did achieve a wonderful rapport. It took a lifetime practically, but at least he, re he admitted this in one of his writings. Nonetheless, he was such a cold, impersonal person. I used to say this with Soriano, with Schindler, all the other architects, we became good friends. All of a sudden, as I was focusing the camera, I saw something in front of my camera. I took my hand and cloth off, and it was Richard Stenoch was standing there with a little twig. I said, Richard, you're an intelligent man. Do you expect me to get little twigs in front of my lens to hide a strip of concrete six feet high? Well, he says, actually, I could use somebody, and my son Raymond is just about to go to McGill University, so there's a room downstairs available, and you could eat with us, and um, you don't have to pay me, and I don't pay you. 
I thought about this for about two seconds. I thought, this is a wonderful chance. This is a great opportunity, and I jumped at it. And um, I think what happened to me personally was that working for Neutra and uh, being around that and feeling that the almost desperate commitment to the art uh, sort of sunk in. And uh, actually stayed three years and he actually after about six months or so he did start paying. And there was a squawk box everywhere when you're in the bathroom you're gonna hear RGN's voice saying Paul I'd like a sketch of this in the morning you know it's about midnight now and so time really meant very little to him and it was probably about midnight and uh, Richard and Dione had just come back from the theater <clears throat> and Richard came through the front door first and it was like a bullet he was back looking at the drawings you know, and seeing what's happening you know what's going on he was pleased that somebody was working away on his project there was the other side, you know, I sort of felt sorry for her, walking up alone and after a nice evening. I soon realized that to get some kind of a life, you need to get out of that house. My grandfather was a complicated man. He had a certain power that still influences us to this day. That for me, it is a privilege to live in this space which is always new. This architecture, in my view, will be modern 50 years from now. Meeting Richard Neutra was extremely faithful because my whole life pattern began on that day. An extremely generous, very sweet man. When he was performing, he wasn't. He was all elbows. But, um, the emphasis has been more on the elbows and you know, in the past and all, and how, how clever he was and how he could outsmart and, and, he, and he actually manipulate the media and get on Time magazine and all those kinds of things. How do he do that? It's really amazing. <laughs>